Uh, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to the Money and Me podcast. My name is Harish, and I'm your host. In this podcast, you get to hear some of the most insightful interviews from the industry experts around the globe. And for the same today, I have a very influential person by my side. His name is Dirk Lewis. He has been the co-founder of Financial Times Deutschland, and currently he's the co-founder of Upland Me, or which we will cover more in the further part of this podcast. But before that, Dirk, I would like to know how you are doing. Wie geht es mit dir? <laughs> oh, cool. You, you speak some German. No, I'm, I'm doing fine. <clears throat> you know, I'm beautiful California, as you can see in my background, even though it's artificial. Actually, that's the place where I am in San Francisco Bay Area. Still nice weather here. It's a little bit late tonight. It's early morning for you guys, but um, yeah, all, all good. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm really pleased if you look, if you take some time to extend your introduction so that viewers could connect with you better. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so uh, as you rightfully said, so my, my background is I'm originally from Germany, but I live here in Silicon Valley, you know, since roughly 13 years. Uh, my background is uh, I started originally, um, uh, I've wrote a PhD in uh, private and state controlled currencies. Uh, that's also, you know, with all the crypto stuff, I'm going to full circle now, uh, all the research work I've done, you know, my previous years. And then, then in uh, Germany, I started two companies, one with the Financial Times, one other company in the, in the fintech space. And um, then I moved to Silicon Valley. And where I was also mentor for, um, you know, over 30 startups have helped them, you know, raise capital, um, enter, you know, the US market, um, lots of other things and got really early involved with uh, blockchain decentralized ledger technologies and got really, you know, excited in 2011 already and we looked at the technology and, you know, we're pitching to, you know, lots of people over here and back in 20. 12 or 13, you know, we said, hey, the world is going to be decentralized. And everyone looked at us, and said, what are these guys are talking about, really? <laughs> so because there was the time, you know, mobile was around and then social and so on. And nobody really thought about really, except for some geeks, you know, about the whole idea of decentralization. Well, and then 2018, um, I put myself together with uh, Manny Honigstein and Indan Zuckerman. Uh, they're both from uh, from the gaming space and uh, and you know me more coming more from the blockchain angle and I said you know because we were friends and we always wanted to do something together and you know we were meeting you know for you know drinks and coffee and all that stuff and and you know one night we actually played uh, the game Monopoly and that's how we got uh, let's say inspired because I think everyone knows Monopoly right uh, you know when you're a kid everyone plays it where you have to buy streets, you have to collect multiple streets with the same colors, you know, and then you try to rip off others in a certain way, right? That's not how Upland is, but we got inspired by the whole idea. And we said, hey, what if, you know, we we do that, uh, you, know, in a, you know, in a very positive way, uh, you know, that we say, okay, let's let's rebuild the world. That was our mantra. And uh, that's how, how it all came together. And, you know, it, it, at the beginning, we called it property trading game. But we said, okay, we take blockchain, and we, uh, you know, combine it, uh, you know, with the with the inspiration of Monopoly and um, and take actually the real world because we believe people can really associate with it, and um, that's how Upland was basically born back back in 2018. Oh, that's that's really exciting, and I kind of understand now this whole voyage of the Dark Lord story, and. I would like I would like to dive more specifically into how did you actually enter this blockchain? Yeah, so <clears throat> let's 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 make it quickly step back, right? When we when we're thinking about blockchain and, and everything around it. So so when we said when we set out and we started up and we said, okay, we want to build really something which is, you know, you know, suited for, for mass market. So everyone really can use it, not just in you know, the geeks. And the problem is with blockchain is, you know, the way it's built, you know, it's, it's kind of tricky with private keys, wallets, and so on. And that's why we said, okay, we really want to go a different path here. And, you know, what, what is really, what, what, what is attractive to, let's say the average user and, you know, the average users, you know, at that time or today is the same thing still is mainly on this mobile phone. We said, okay, we want to build something with, you know, a blockchain application, which is mobile first. Right? And we set out and we're looking around, you know, what, what kind of blockchains are out there where we said, okay, 
what can really support that? And you know, we looked, of course, at Ethereum or some some other blockchains back in 2018. You know, nobody was speaking of Solana and things at that time, right? It was you know still in, in, in infancy. And then we found you know the EOS as a blockchain where we said, okay, this is actually the blockchain which suits exactly our needs, right? You can we can do a lot of transactions, and which we which we do. You know, when we launch new cities, you write down, you know, we have 160 transactions per seconds. You know, this is quite a lot, of which you need really highly scalable blockchain um, and uh, and we can use tools you know where actually especially transactions between players are going to be for free right that's that's also one one big advantage because obviously um, eos is based on a um, uh, consensus algorithm or proof of, of stake that means you know we only need to stake the accounts but we don't need to pay for every transaction there's no blockchain transaction fees there are no gas fees and so on so this was actually the the requirement for us to really get started with uh, with uh, with that technology and um, so, so that's, that's uh, and then, you know, everything came together. So the way, you know, when we say it's really easy to onboard, you just need an email and a password. You can use the, on the web, you can use credit card and PayPal, right, to, to sign in. And, you know, you can use crypto to purchase, you know, something, but you can, you know, use those other currencies. And what we also have today is, you know, we have what we call, you know, a property to USD. You can sell NFTs with an upland for US dollars to other players. So you don't need to go down the crypto route. So we have a lot of players who came in and said, you know, I'm actually not a crypto person, right? But I'm using Upland, I'm playing Upland and now I have NFTs and so on. And that's really exciting, right? And the way and the easy of use, how I was able to get onboarded. Okay. Um, that's quite creative. And the, uh, I have a little out of context question for you. Did you at any point in your life hold any Bitcoin? I did, yeah. <laughs> of course, uh, I okay. bought Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I I bought Bitcoin when it was at eighty dollars, so that was uh, uh, it was really cheap, obviously at that time. And uh, but I, <laughs> you know, I, I, when it was then at one hundred fifty dollars, I told to my wife, "Great, I almost double, right? I should I sold everything off." <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, uh, and uh, it was not a lot, though, right? But it, I sold everything off, and, and now you know, my, you know, my wife comes in. Oh, it was not such a good idea back then, right? I said, oh, well, maybe you're right, but you never know. Right? It's just they take it with humor, though. <laughs> yeah, that's that's quite hilarious. And um, now we have talked, like you have talked about upland, like a couple of times in this podcast, right now. So I would like you to explain us what is Upland about, okay? So like you have just said, like it involves players, so it is a kind of a game. So I would like you to throw some light over Upland and how did you get the idea of a project like Upland? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, you know, we got inspired by by the game of Monopoly, and um, and then of course we said in the beginning, you know, it's like like a property trading game, but today we are way beyond that, right? We are what we call so now it's a, it's an NFT metaverse, which is based on the real world. So what does this mean actually? We are Upland is based on three pillars. We say, and you see that also up in the logo here, play, earn, and connect. And um, we always want to, you know, meet, you know, everything we built in the platform is really suited, you know, to those three, through these four pillars. So play means today what you get when you download Upland on, on the app stores or, you know, can use it also on the web, of course, you get a map application very much like Google Maps, you zoom in and then you see actually can go all the way down to the property borders, which are based on actually, you know, the actual actual boundaries and you can purchase that 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 uh, that ad address actually so that that's uh, that's how it works so we launched in san francisco we're currently live in uh, in new york uh, chicago cleveland and a couple of other cities and eventually going to go worldwide but you know and i can explain that a little bit later you strong believer in uh, supply and demand there was a specific reason why we didn't launch the whole world but let's stick to the three pillars so People, what they do, they purchase this property and then they start earning a yield on it. Um, so I have to say one thing is we have our in-app currency, which is called Apex, UPX, <laughs> uh, in three letters. And uh, $1 equals 1,000 Apex, which is actually a fixed exchange rate. And don't don't mix it up. There's another Apex on, on the exchanges, which, are, which, are, which is traded, but we are completely separate. Our, our 
the Apex are not tradable in, in Upland on exchanges. The reason for that is has all regulatory, regulatory uh, explanations here, especially in the US, because we have to comply with uh, lots of other things. So, so you now purchase that property and you start earning a yield on it on, of 17% of Apex. And you can increase that yield now when you start completing a collection. So very much like like in um, like in um, uh, uh, you know like in, in the Monopoly game. So you can collect now properties with the same characteristics. You know, three properties on the same street or three museums. Uh, and once you complete that collection, you increase actually your um, your yield on those properties. Yeah. So and this sets in motion, you know, a lot of activities between the players, uh, you know, who need you know different properties for different reasons and so on. So which is uh, kind of compelling. So this is the, what we call the first game engagement point. And this goes then further. We have what we also have is the um, we have treasure hunts, which is a fun thing to do. We have scavenger hunts. We have live events, you know, like 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 a couple of days ago because we launched Chicago. There was the Chicago Mob Tour, right, where Al Capone and everyone was. You know, you do stuff together with others in the app, so it's a lot of fun. It's not just you know just playing by yourself. You know, you always do stuff with others. So this is the first play component, and we're also going to introduce. We all mention it soon. Going to be uh, introducing cars into Upland, and we're also planning on having car races and stuff. So that's going to be very exciting. What what's coming there? So the second pillar then is earn, and that is what all this new blockchain games, you know, play to earn, what it's all about, right? That is, we want also not just to extract the entertainment value for our users <clears> of <throat> players, we want them also to extract the monetary value. As I said, Apex is non-tradable for regulatory reasons, but what you are able to do, you can sell your NFTs in Upland also to other players, which the NFTs are, of course, all properties you're purchasing, they're all NFTs. But in the future, you will have cars, you have art and other things, which are NFTs. You can sell those for, for US dollars uh, to, 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 to other players, which uh, makes it, of course, then compelling, you know, still to play the game. But at the same time, you have the opportunity to extract money out of, out of the game or out of the metaverse again. And um, so... What it means earn is what we want people to run and operate businesses in Upland. So right now, they, um, what you can do now is once you own a property, which is a pure parcel, you can now start building a house or mansion or a shop on your property. And then you can start running a business there. So we're introducing those businesses very soon. And you can now sell NFTs to other players. I'll give you one example, maybe outside the core. Maybe you want to sell a virtual water fountain to other players because they want to beautify their, their, their property, right? Where they have a house on. Or maybe we talk to some players. There's one player who wants to focus on fences. <laughs> so he wants to become you know, a specialist in creating you know, good looking fences for houses. And so it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of things. <laughs> stuff which which uh, people are becoming creative but they can sell those either for apex they can choose or they can sell these things and uh, those those di uh, digital items they're creating themselves for nfts but you cannot and and the vision is you know you can you know create those items yourself or you have others creating it for you and they're selling it in your shop then right so so there's a lot of, you know this this is uh, you know the direction is going where we strongly believe play to earn is important a special case on the urn is also that we just introduced what we call the NFT portal. So you will be able to import NFTs from other blockchains. So currently it's able, you can import NFTs from the WAX blockchain. Uh, you know, we have a, we had a partnership with the blockchain heroes where you're able to import those cards into Upland. And that's what, what becomes now so interesting because everyone, you know, is buying NFTs left and right. But what do you do with them? They just sit in your wallet. In Upland, we cast utility, we cast content to, to your NFTs. So just imagine now you bought maybe F1 Delta car racer or, or maybe a nice piece of art. Now you can import it when it also sits on Ethereum. You can import it into Upland and maybe you run, run and operate a, a digital gallery shop in, you know, in, in Upland. But now you can combine NFTs from different uh, platforms you know, in one and you just operate that shop there and then you advertise it across the web and hopefully people come and, you know, purchase, you know, your 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 art there. So, which is of course uh, very compelling. And of course there will be the other way around. You can also export those back out to the blockchain wherever they came from, Ethereum or Flow or, and, and, and the Wax and so on. So so that's that's the, you know, very special part of, of the, the second pillar, um, Earn. 
And then we have the third um, pillar, which is connect. Um, so right now we have a very active community and uh, especially on Discord and the Telegram. And eventually we want to move the community into Upland. So going forward, you will be able to have, you know, communication tools where you can communicate with others. You can meet in virtual settings like a virtual coffee shop, like a virtual fan shop, uh, you know, in the stadium and, and lots of other places, you know, when you're a fan of a, of a football club and what have you, right? And you can meet with others, talk about NFTs, can talk about other stuff. And so Upland is going to become really a, a social place. Okay, yeah. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. What I understand about a plan right now is it is a crypto digitalized version of real estate. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I found another thing, ProSound, that you told about NFTs. I, I have just gotten into NFTs some time back, and the thing that intrigued me the most was like, what would I do after buying those NFT tokens? Yeah. So you kind of solved that problem very, you know, in a very profound manner. We can just like, if you are buying a property in Upland, you can just showpiece that NFT in that shop or something like that. So I found that idea really great, to be honest. And um, in the, you have um, spoken about expanding Upland worldwide. So that takes me to the next question. Where do you see Upland going in the next 10 or five years? Yeah, I mean, we clearly want to go global, right? That's that's. Uh, I mean, we have to solve a couple of uh, uh, you know technical issues here. So I give you one example. Uh, right now, we have you know we have, when you purchase something on in Upland, it's based on the real world borders of a property. You know, like like when you purchase a house in real life, it, it's exactly the same borders which you purchase also in Upland. So we need to get the borders of properties around the world. So there's some countries or some cities, you know, where we can actually get that, but not all of them, right? So because they just don't have that data, right? So we have to solve that first because otherwise it doesn't make sense. You know, it doesn't make sense if we draw rectangles everywhere because then it's not, uh, you know, then it doesn't look like the real world. I mean, we're, we're, we're running a project on the side with the university where we analyze satellite images. We're taking a little bit um, uh, neural networks in order to learn how, you know, those, those uh, property models are. I don't want to go too much in detail, but once we solve that, actually we can really, we are able to go uh, on a global scale. In the meantime, we probably going to go first to those cities uh, or countries you know where we actually get access data quite quite quickly and and we said you know originally we wanted actually to go to to asia uh, this year however uh, we decided to postpone that because we we um, we uh, we as you probably heard we have a you know we have a license agreement with the NFLPA the, in 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 here in the US so that's the reason we're rolling out um, 30 30 cities in in the US first you know the NFL cities and once we have done that i assume right uh, don't take me for granted at this moment but i assume that starting q1 we're going to go international right and then you know we have to see uh, which which countries we're going to pick pick first <clears throat> Okay, that's nice. Um, now you have also like mentioned metaverse like a couple of times in this podcast. So I would like you to throw some light over how metaverse can alter the internet as we see it. And is there enough resources, enough demand, enough software, and enough hardware for metaverse to come into full potential like crypto is coming? Yeah, so... Uh... I think we have a very special case with Upland because, uh, you know, metaverse, there, there are different metaverse out there or part of the metaverse, right? There always this discussion is that multiple metaverses or one metaverse. I believe it's, it's rightfully say there's only one metaverse and then you have different applications. So if you look at it, you know, there's, you know, the, the others, you know, either they are non-crypto or non-blockchain based like, like Fortnite and Roblox, uh, Minecraft, what have you, or GTA. Right, and then you have the uh, blockchain base like Sandbox or Decentraland, right, or like us, Upland. However, we are the I think there's some some other smaller players, but I think we are the only ones um, who are based on the real world. So coming to your question is is that the extension? Yeah, this is Web three three point zero, and what does three point zero mean? Um, you know, the next generation of internet, right? The web 
2.0 was about, you know, so, I mean, 1.0, we knew, you know, it's easy transformation of information, uh, um, um, transfer of information, free transfer, right? Everything became super cheap, you know, have a website here and there. Web 2.0 was more about the whole social web. And Web 3.0 is now all about the exchange of value, but this has to go a bit further, exchange of value, because blockchain enables you to do that. Um, however, uh, but, you know, exchange of value is not enough. You need also to have all the idea of content and around what, what actually a metaverse uh, provides to you. So, but people will use it in a different way. I mean, I mean, that's a little bit, you know, the vision I, we have here at Upland, right? Like in five or 10 years, right? We know that, you know, when you take those, those uh, you can't see it right now, but the augmented reality glasses or so, right? So I clearly see a time in five or 10 years when you, when especially also in the case of Upland, the borders, you know, they blur between the real and the virtual world. Something is, you know, virtual in Upland, but at the same time, you're still walking around the real world. So you're wearing those glasses, right? And then you see, you know, you see maybe a shop or you go into a football stadium, whatever, right? And then those glasses, you know, they, you know, transmit you additional information about what you're currently looking at. And this might be different for you than for your neighbor who sits right next to you, or it might be the same. Yeah, but um, but somehow it becomes a let's say natural part or extension of your everyday life. People might be con concerned, oh, you know, we're going to be uh, online all the time and so on. But I think it more in a positive way that uh, you have actually enriched your life, and you know, you have you know, it starts. You get better information. You have more better entertainment. You know, and uh, and you can actually help others because you have this additional information which wasn't there before. And that's that's what I see. What really Web three is about, right? It becomes much more a natural uh, integration uh, into your into your daily uh, life. Okay, that's nice. Okay, that's nice. I kind of understand about metaverse, but I guess people um, people could resist the change because it is coming really fast. So people can likely be reluctant to watch it. It's just my personal opinion. Okay, so now I'd like to move on to um, DeFi and SEC, SEC as in Securities and Exchange Commission in USA. So recently SEC bashed De um, DeFi or crypto about uh, over its regulation policies. So it says crypto won't survive another 10 years without regulation. So what do you think about that? Um. Yeah, you know, from Upland perspective, I mean, we, we're not really DeFi, right? We are a game at the end of the day, right, at the moment, even though we're touching, you know, real world things and maybe one day also, you know, you know, you know, of course, being regulatory compliant, maybe one day there will be exchanges, you know, who offer DeFi kind of services within Upland, you know, but, um, but I think the industry is so young and, you know, and, you know, I wish, you know, that, you know, the regulators on one hand, you know, regulate some stuff. So, so I think that's needed to give, you know, in order to make also this piece of, of finance also available to the masses, because if they will not come, if they feel not safe when, when they do something, it's just going to be things for, for the geeks. Right, and uh, so that, I think that that's important. However, regulation cannot be go too far that it's you know it suppresses you know all the innovation, innovative potential which you which you have of, with DeFi. Yeah, so that's 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 how I see it. Okay. Yeah, I agree, and uh, what I believe is also like that uh, you cannot totally eliminate regulations even in DeFi because you know there needs to be some kind of regulations. Um, which we um, which we'll co uh, cover in the later part of this podcast. I, I have a topic regarding that. So regulations are important, and I think that you cannot like underestimate or ignore them. Yep. So now, Dirk, I would like you to throw some light over NFTs because NFTs are something which are overlooked a lot when we're talking about crypto or blockchain. Yeah. So NFTs, of course, are you know, 
I mean, differ beast then, you know, I mean, uh, hopefully your audience knows the difference between fungible and non-fungible tokens, right? Uh, you know, of course, right? Fungible tokens, you know, <laughs> like like Bitcoin, you know, every coin and quotation mark is the same, right? And, uh, right, but then you have non-fungible tokens, which are basically unique items as such. And this creates completely new types of use cases, right? Of course, gaming, what we're currently doing, you know, is, is evident. Uh, you know, digital art is evident, but I clearly see also that there will be completely new types of, of products, new types of services, which will, you know, which will be combined with the idea of, of NFTs, you know, so regular, you know, day-to-day -day brands, you know, who are entering NFTs, I see that, you know, they, that they might extend, you know, their, um, you know, their brand into, into NFTs. What I mean with that is, maybe stupid example right but let's say uh, you know every day is good good let's say let's say a shampoo right so what do you say why, why do you need nfts for that right but uh, you know when, when when i'm when i'm selling shampoos right I, i'm trying to you know have a loyal customer base right so how do i do this right and maybe i can use nfts for that right so give you one example so that's also what we do by the way in upland is you know with uh, the ideas so now you purchase you know 10 purchase you purchase you know 10 bottles of green shampoo and <laughs> five bottles of blue shampoo because you purchased all those and have used those right you get actually each time an nft but then you know eventually you have bought all 15 you can merge them together and then you get a special nft which now gives you access maybe to something else maybe a concert or something right so this is opportunities you know for for consumer brands also to to uh, you know to enter the market and you know to do stuff with with nfts it just doesn't stop at, at art or something and if you want my honest opinion i think there's so much stuff out there i mean it's uh, it's you know i when i look at my twitter twitter stream right i mean there's it's just blinking and all those images all the time and, and so on so it's a lot and you know i know it's it's super hyped and you know there's uh, there's also really cool art in there but i think nfts also have a different utility you know uh, you know which uh, of course you have to provide the utility to it but that that's where where where, where it gets really exciting you know, I also think that NFT is here to stay. For example, let's, let's take, as NFT entered into art, you and me, everyone in the world can relate to art in some way or other. And they're going to correlate to NFTs in that manner. So NFTs are there to stay. And so you can see, like, there are a few people who are making some money out of it because um, they have identified it like before the crowd has identified the potential of nfts and you know a 12 year old boy, 12 year old boy made about 400k usd just by selling his nfts so you can just like estimate the potential of nfts with you know with this case study and so I'm, i want your opinion about what do you think we can make out of like what do you think can be a career out of out of nfts yeah i think let's let's look at that right so i mean not everyone can purchase now a beeple or a piece of art for you know 60 million dollars or crypto punk for i don't know five million dollars or so it's just you know these are some crypto rich people who can do that and of course these are always you know taking the headlines in newspapers oh this has been sold for seven million nine million but let's face it right the average person just cannot afford that it's just impossible so i believe that the nfts will also have some kind of a renaissance where um there will be nfts you know which cost maybe between i mean i'm, I'm thinking dollars here obviously or it costs maybe 50 cents maybe two dollars maybe ten dollars and these are items you know which you know, when you think about the collectible markets, right, when you have baseball cards and so on, right, where people want to trade those cards also for $2 or $3, they don't want to trade them always. Of course, there will be cards which are worth $10, $10,000 or maybe half a million or whatever happens, yeah. I mean, this is always important, you know, from psychology that people love to trade, but the majority of people, they just want to trade, you know, cards between two and 20 and $30 or something, they're happy about it. So I think we will see, much more NFTs in the collectible space. You know, the collectible space will be reinvented in a certain way and you will have much more people coming in and, you know, doing everyday uh, more type of trading and not the, you know, the million or millions of dollars of trades. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. So yeah, I completely agree to that because there uh, these case studies that come out like someone has made a million dollar out of NFTs. These are just like the tip of the <laughs> iceberg, and yeah. people tend to believe into it, and they just start getting into the field without any you know substantial knowledge. So yeah. Um, now uh, I we know that you have been like in the positions like lead mentor where you have mentored startups and you have been co-founder many times. I have like I can like take two minutes to extend your entire introduction if I, if I wanted to. So yeah, so I would like you to go about how should one go about um, starting a startup. So uh, and particularly in the field of blockchain and cryptocurrencies because. Youngsters seems to be intrigued while entering into the field of like to be an entrepreneur in the field of blockchain and crypto. Yeah, that's that's a very good question. So I mean, you know, we're going through different phases, right? So the uh, I mean, with the first phase, you know, when Bitcoin came around and everyone thought, okay, there's only going to be one one currency, and people then then Ethereum came, you know, where the first programmable you were able to program on top of of a blockchain. And then you know if you then if the next uh, you know so blockchains will keep on innovating in a certain sense, I think. But we are about and but blockchain are basically the infrastructure of everything. So when you want to start a company, uh, run a startup, right? Of course, it depends. You know where where your capabilities are. If you are uh, you know and there's very limited numbers of people in, in the world actually who can go on very low level on the protocol level, right? Then you should always, of course, innovate and think about, you know, new cool uh, blockchain technologies and and then so on. So that's that's perfect. What you can what what you can do. But I think, um, but they but this is also again for more limited number of people. This is so sophisticated stuff uh, to my mind. Right? I think what you should probably start thinking is very much. I mean, we're just you know, let's say if you take a you know looking at the year, right? I think we are today a journey January third when it comes to developing decentralized applications so on the application layer, right? So when you compare it with mobile apps, so mobile apps started to kick in basically in 2008 until you know until today, right? So we are basically today in 2008 of you know, or third of January of a year or something, you know, when it comes to dApps, right? And and I think, uh, but people very often easily, I mean, you had that also in, on the mobile app space, right? People were always copying each other and so on. But I think if you want to really start and build something meaningful, I mean, you can have a strategy just to copy something, you know, and then, and, 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 you know, leave it after a while. But I personally don't find that it's intriguing, right? You should really think about, you know, novel things, which, which hasn't been, haven't been done before. And, uh, but the, the, you will have similar, you know, issue. How do you get then to customers? How do you find your users, you know, who are going to use your app? And that's why I tend to say, you should probably look into, you know, existing blockchains which have traction, or for instance, you know, what we're going to do at Upland also <clears throat> next year, we plan on launching a developer's portal where um, developer can come in and they can develop on top of Upland their own application, own decentralized application, which is super interesting because they somehow <clears throat> piggyback on our, on our audience. And uh, very much like when you today develop a mobile app, you piggyback on the audience of, of Apple or of Google, right, on Android. Now you can piggyback on the existing audience of a metaverse and, and, and then, you know, come up with, uh, with new ideas. And that's where I see a lot of creativity happening um, in the next, you know, um, you know, starting actually next year. That's my gut feeling, you know, and then for the next 10 years on this application layer, we're going to see new 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 ideas uh you know which we haven't thought of but which are so so mind-blowing which uh which uh, which makes me super exciting yeah i like how you said um you should one should think about noble ideas that haven't been thought about before but you know what i see as a problem in today's world is youngsters or like entrepreneurs are basically focused on making money rather than solving problems so i think that's a biggest hurdle that that is stopping themselves from like enhancing their creativity and i also like oh, yeah, how yeah, you yeah. Yeah, that just to add in there, when you when you I mean started I started five companies and 
I never thought about, oh, I want to be rich tomorrow. I always thought about, okay, there's a problem I want to solve or I have an idea which I think the other people are going to like. Because this is the only way you can be successful. If you just think about, oh, how can I make money and become rich tomorrow? Then you, you, then you shouldn't do it. Then you should become maybe an investment banker or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, so also I think while making a startup or going for a startup, psychology is important. What are you trying to offer your target audience? You need to understand the psychology of that audience. So I'm really like interested in knowing what kind of psychology does you target with a plan? So, um, yeah, let me think about, so the, the, when you think about when people purchase a piece of land and when we, when we, we're speaking to our users also, we're getting the feedback. So, and land is always something which has a high, you know, emotional touch to it. So people purchase it. Of course, when you speak to people who are over the U S oh, I want to purchase my own property in San Francisco or New York, right. And then very often disappointed because it had always been purchased by someone else. And they need to pay for a higher, you know, secondary market, they pay, have to pay for a higher price. But others, people also want to purchase something because, you know, they have some other emotional connection to it. Maybe they went to school there or, or maybe they aspire to own a house where a celebrity is, you know, living or maybe a celebrity was born one day. Or they just want to fulfill a dream, you know, they want to have a house, even if it's just virtual close to the ocean or something, right, which they don't have in real life. So there's a, lots of components which uh, which uh, uh, fall into it. But I think the, the grander vision of Upland is, goes way beyond that from, from psychology perspective. So the what we currently see is, you know, we, in Upland, we have the concept of neighborhoods where people actually can group together. And uh, we haven't built that out, but the, the idea is that you can actually designate your home address in a neighborhood. And then people in that neighborhood, they can start voting for things, what kind of shops they want to have there and so on. And we already see that the people are doing it to a certain extent already now. They're grouping together neighborhoods. And even though, which is kind of interesting, they're not from San Francisco. They are from everywhere. So you can play Upland from anywhere in the world. So, you know, people are purchasing, you know, in the same neighborhood, but they're from, from India, they're from, you know, Australia, UK, wherever. And they gather around together a certain you know, around a certain piece of interest, they want to create maybe a neighborhood which uh, deals with art, yeah, or something, yeah. And then, and then they're they're together there. And the interesting thing is, of course, you had groups in Facebook or wherever, right, where you have you know art groups. But now we have this new component that actually this this lo this location, this this virtual location, adds a, a different spin to it. Right. And uh, so you really have to be in there to understand it. But that's what, what gets people together. Hey, I, I'm part of, of the San Francisco community and that exchange, I find friends, you know, and that's what the way we see it and how, you know, we, we envision Upland you know, from psychology, you know, being your, you know, your, your good daily companion where you have friends, where you socialize with others and, you know, and, and do things there. That, that, that's, that's, that's what we're aiming for. So you're serving the need of acquirement of humans, yeah? <laughs> and <Thank you. laughs> there, there was one point that I liked about, which is, I, I guess I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. So we will, as we've talked about psychology right now, I would like to point out um, the, uh, the, you know, the enthusiast in blockchain industry their psychology is being affected in a bad manner right now because of the hacks that are going on just after the Polynet, Polynet hack. There was a domino effect seen in the occurrence of these hacks until the Banksy's hack last time. So what are your views over that? Uh, how does blockchain hold credibility after the series of these hacks in just a short amount of time? Yeah. That's probably the downside. As soon as money is involved, as soon as value is involved, right? You get all those, you know, malicious people who are trying to hack. And I, I personally find it sad. On the other hand, right now we all know Bitcoin. You know, the protocol has not been hacked as, as so far, right? You know, normally things around it gets hacked, right? So that's that's where the risk is in. 
but blockchain itself is a very robust technology so far, right? I mean, there's nothing which is which really has happened, right? There's maybe a smart contract which is not well written, or there's a wallet where there's a security hole, right? Or you know, you know, people are getting attacked themselves and you know exposing their private keys somewhere in a, in a stupid manner, right? And I mean, we also had that at Upland, right? People were trying to to mimic our website, right, and trying to steal stuff from others. It happens unfortunately all the time and. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that's where, where actually people, you know, who, who truly believe, you know, in the, in the good of, of things, right, they should actually group together and really try to exclude all those hackers and, and uh, you know, and, and fight them, you know, as a, as a unit together, right, because, I mean, you know, that's I think the only way forward going now and of course we as as operators we can you know we we work hard you know to make the applications as secure as possible of course yeah yeah um, as you said that Bitcoin hasn't really been hacked I have a question regarding that um, when I was like learning about Bitcoin in the starting phase um, I got into the dark web and thing that uh, it, it was used primarily um, in the starting phase on the dark web. So, uh, and ever since the US FBI um, confiscated uh, about a billion dollar of Silk Road, that made me think that um, um, Bitcoin or blockchain is kind of compromisable because, you know, FBI managed to confiscate that uh, one million, one billion US dollar worth Bitcoins. So what are your views over that? That's just a, like out of context question, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have all the details to be honest. I, I don't know. Maybe they. Do you know? Did they get access? To the pri I mean, if you have the private key, of course you get access to it, right? So that's. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they hacked in their way into it, or the FBI or whatever, right? I don't think they must okay. have had the, the the keys, right? Otherwise, I don't see how, how they did get access to it. Yeah, I don't have the details. Mr. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um, you are into metaverse and we have also talked about how to make a career out of NFTs. So I would also like to inquire you about how to make a career out of metaverse, how to earn money actually through metaverse. Uh, you, how to earn money in the metaverse? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a different ways of, of earning, especially in our metaverse, right? So the one, one, one idea is, of course, you can, you know, you can buy cheap and sell, sell expensive, right? <laughs> right? So that's, that's one way of doing it. That's called speculation, right? But that's, uh, that's, that's what not how we build up and that's not whatever we had in mind, right? Some people do it. But our our idea is really what we're doing at Upland is we're building what we call an open economy. That's the reason why we have a fixed exchange rate between the dollar and the our in-game uh, currency Apex is one to one thousand, and we're not changing that, right? And um, so the um, the the idea here is really that. Um, uh, that people can make money by running a business, really by, by doing something they would do in real life. Yeah. And this business can be diverse, can be anything. You can either run a business that's just selling NFTs, but I see that also not the very so distant future that people will also mix in. You know, maybe you sell some uh, some physical goods, right? Uh, maybe some sneakers on your virtual upland store and you mix it then with NFTs. So you have just a mix of, of things what you're selling. Yeah, so that's how you make money or you provide services because there will be lots of people who said, you know what, I have the capital. And you see that, you know, when, you know, you know, you see this with the Philippines, you know, where people work a lot, right, for, you know, and they have all the scholarships and all these things which are happening. I see that also in Upland that maybe, you know, there's someone who said, you know, I want to run and operate a store on the Fifth Avenue, but I need to create a lot of, you know, let's say, you know, digital assets for that. I don't have the time to do it, but I will be willing to pay others for it, right? So they would then go out and say, you know, someone, you know, in, in a different country or so would say, hey, you know, you want to create that for me? And, you know, I pay you for that. So it's like a service. And then, you know, and then they maybe shares the revenue. So he pays them up front, depends on them. But it's just like real life where people actually can come together across the world and, you know, and, 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 and interact with each other and, and, and transact, especially. 
Okay, that's nice. And that was the last question for this podcast. But before that, I would like yeah, yeah, when we were discussing the psychology of our planet, um, you you struck my mind by saying you can buy uh, you know the virtual properties of celebrities or where celebrities are born. That struck my mind, and now I'm really you know excited to buy the mansion of Eminem in Detroit <laughs> because I'm a big fan of him. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it is? Yeah. <laughs> what? Do you know where it is? Yeah, Detroit. Yeah. Oh, do you know the address? The concrete address? No, not right now. <laughs> But yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> so that was, um, to be honest, that was really you know a very insightful and I would say very practical talk. To be honest with you, and I enjoyed every part of it, and I hope all the viewers watching it and. I not only hope I'm pretty sure that they might have also enjoyed it. And to the viewers who are still watching this podcast, what are you doing? Just go and buy something on Upland. Buy um, House of Justin Bieber if you like. <laughs> you like that because I'm gonna buy that mansion of everyone soon enough. So yeah. So Dirk, um, I would love that. I would love if you would like to give some ending statement to this podcast. Yeah, look, now we're excited. I mean, that this is somehow a global community can can come together. You know, we don't care where people are from. We just want them to come together. And now, in what I earlier said, you know, with like-minded other people with the same interest, come and join us. You know, Upland, I think, is not just a metaverse. It's also a movement, right? So you can go and join us on www.upland.me or just download it on, on, on the app or iOS store or follow us on Twitter, um, Upland Me. So, and um, I hope we will see you all in the metaverse and create something awesome together with us. Yeah, yeah. So that's really nice. And to all the viewers, that was it for today's podcast. And if you are hungry about getting some insightful knowledge about crypto space and blockchain and NFTs and so on and on, just make sure that you hit that red button red subscribe button and like and share this video and make sure to check upland if you have if you are a human actually because yeah <laughs> it triggers your psychology if you want to acquire something just go on upland sign up and it's pretty much simple it's even free even the transactions are free yeah there is no gas fee like the normal blockchain yeah no, so yeah, have that, yeah. what are you waiting yep. for man then? <laughs>